This is for the players. I'm Ryan Benson. I'm Josh Saunders. And this is for the players, the pop culturist PlayStation podcast. Over 40 years of playing PlayStation and 8 plus years in that games media combined, we thought we'd throw our hats into the ring and join that PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and 8 a.m. on iTunes and the other podcast services. If you want to be a part of future conversations, please join us on Facebook, join us on Discord, comment below. If you're feeling generous, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash popculturist. Head over there, check out the tears. Might be something there that interests y'all. And if you are a Patreon supporter at any level, you can watch us record this show live, like people are over there, and Paul is right there. And it's of got course, an email. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just, oh. No, no. It's, oh, it's your lovely. life. Like, that's lovely. <laughs> Get a nice who's, reminder you should watch it. Who's that ugly bloke in the middle? Uh, I'm not too sure. We'll get to that in a minute. But until then, if you want to show the love of the pop culturist on your body, head to popculturist.com slash shop where you can buy this. You can buy this. You can't, can't buy Colin. It's really, can't buy really expensive from the Geelong Football Club. <laughs> uh, so you can, yeah, you can buy shirts and mugs. And I bought a phone case, actually, in the last sale. I bought it shows how much I know about football because I said you can't buy Collingwood jerseys. That's a Geelong work. Cat, so. Yeah, ball. Balls. <laughs> Go team. <laughs> and of course, we are, we are on Twitch at twitch.tv slash thepopculturist where you can like and subscribe and all those sort of things. And as we did mention, there is a third face in the room here. If you're listening to the audio, there is a third voice. And it's Paul James from player2.net.au. How are you, sir? I'm back. It's for good the, to be back. Fifth, fifth, um, fifth time? Fourth or fifth? I don't fourth know. I'm just going to keep pulling away from Jono Peck. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all I know is it was, it was already... on my level, man. It was already one more than Jono. Yeah. Now it's two more so than what, Jono. whatever he's done, we'll just add two to that. I've, hmm. I did see when you kind of sent the message out to everyone saying, hey, he's going to be on there for the fourth or fifth time. I'm starting to scroll through, counting how many times I have or haven't been on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't work it out, though. Well, yeah, look, you are our longest recurring guest by far. Yeah. By far. Again, John, get five. on my level. It's one or two more yeah. than <laughs> the next, but percentage-wise, yeah. it's about as, as a percent. maths teacher, though, Mm. That's, a, that's a big percentage, yeah. Yeah, statistics is very, very important. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, because then, then there's Jono, which is the next. And then, then Dave did a couple. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. <laughs> top, top three. <laughs> <laughs> top three, only three. Uh, so so I'm th- third la- uh, third best, third yeah. last, whatever. How have you been, man, since you were last on here? It's been a good couple of months. Going well, but I'm in baby mode now. We're six weeks away mm. I probably sh- probably arguably shouldn't be leaving my wife right now but hey, here I am right. I'm six weeks is alright yeah, yeah. six weeks you're fine yeah, six fine. hours on the six other. hours yeah. Yeah. the clock's ticking <laughs> better run <laughs> oh no, no it's just well. you like right bang in the middle of all the games in the world <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and the yeah, it's a little final. too close to the big one and then yeah the games oh, that yeah, come out as well and the grand final so for him, that's incredibly important. That's incredibly important. For us, but for me, it's a public holiday. Having said that, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a good excuse You've obviously holiday. got time off. Yeah, so I'll, get, I'll get two weeks of paternity yeah, leave. Yeah, and, you know, initially they sleep for like 23 bucket hours a day. So, it's so you've got paternity leave well spent. Plenty of game time coming up there. So what is your plan of attack for your paternity leave? What are you going to play? Um, it's still in a weird spot in the middle there where, so your Spider-Man's Tomb Raider's Dragon Quest are already out about a month before the supposed due date. Who knows? Maybe baby will come early or whatever. Um... But then still about three, four weeks before Red Dead comes out. So I'm in this weird middle ground. I think Assassin's Creed comes out that week. Mm. So I might play that. Um, but otherwise, I don't really know. What? Assassin's Creed. <laughs> it, came in, it came in off frame. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't really think of too much else mm. that is, as far as things I might play on PlayStation. But like, don't hold it down because um, I was my, my full plan for all the, uh, the all the nine months that I knew my small well, the AO. Uh, Six months I knew my son was coming. Um, my intention was, all right, he's going to be born around, you know, around late November, early December. South Park. This, this, this. South Park, fractured butt hole. Yeah. That was my plan. And they're like, oh, yeah, sorry. Mm. Like, you son's a bitch. You didn't still played it? it you? I didn't finish it then. No, and then I came back. Mm. But I, I, there is a game that I did play recently around from when he was born. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in right now. So the last time I... Have you, do you guys have me tell you the story about how like when James was born not the graphic details I mean the legs most of us have an idea (laughs) and and there's the baby but baby ensued crowning and you know no so so essentially what happened is my wife's like I'm like I'm gonna go to bed I'm like I'm gonna keep playing Rise of the Tomb Raider apparently Uh, and yeah and then I think I might have yeah and then I came to bed like four or five hours later she's like "Uh," that's my baby she's like my my like 
my 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 machine hurts. I'm like, your machine? She's like, yeah, it hurts. I'm like, you know, that, you know, you're about like a day away from having a baby. You're probably having a baby. She's like, how long's been hurting for? I'm like, oh, she's like about about six or so hours. I'm like, wait, hang on. <laughs> it was hurting before you went to bed, and you just let me play Tomb Raider for six hours. She's like, yeah, that's commitment cool. to the game. She's like, I didn't. It wasn't. I didn't want it was to you and Lara time. I'm like, what the fuck? She was letting you enjoy like literally the last hours of not being a parent. Yeah, pretty much. Very in, in hindsight, very nice. At the time, <laughs> at the time I'm you're, like, you're crazy. At the time, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Um, yeah, so this week I went back and played Rise of Tomb Raider. <laughs> After the save, and it was literally, uh, yeah, uh, just uh, this Nove- is the exact November moment 30, I found out that the baby was coming. Yeah, November 30, <laughs> 2018. No, it's two, sorry, 2016. It was, was born. Yeah, Tomb Raider could be part of what I'm playing in that period because there are those three: Spider Man, mm. Dragon, uh, Dragon Quest, and Tomb Raider. They're all coming out in that same window, and you're not going to be able to play all three. Oh, hell no. It's like they're a week apart. You can't finish those Unless games. PlayStation wants to help that party out. Come want, on, guys. I only want one of those games. So Spooder, that's man. Spooder? Yeah. I'm not even that keen for it. <laughs> 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 I feel like I should play it, and I'll, I'll, I know I'll enjoy it. But yeah. Anyway, what else have I been playing this week? I have been playing... Uh, I've got credits on Guacamelee. Ooh. Ooh, the original. Got those, got those credits on stream, which is lovely. Uh, and then I jumped straight into Guacamelee 2, and then it's literally the same. Mm. So far, a bit more. But you happy with that? Heard. Uh, yes, it more. I guess the, I think it's more of the. It would be better if it was the same. Not when you'd finish the other one three minutes before you started exactly. the second yeah. one. See, but, many people have waited like five years. When Guacamelee came out, like 2013, ago, yeah, 14. Before, yeah. So people have been waiting five years without it. But you've gone. Da, da, like, yeah, if it was, if I had that five years apart, I'd be like, this is exactly what. Like I loved. Guacamelee, like it was good. There was some good anger in there. There was some good platforming. Apparently, the second one towards the end, the platforming gets fucking insane. Yeah, yeah I've heard it's really tough. Ridiculously hard. The message I kind of got is the combat is combat fine. normal is like it's alright. Yeah, but, but platforming. the platforming just breaks your soul at the end. Well, and there was aspects of that even in the first one. Exactly, like that's what happened to me towards the end. I mentioned in last week's episode, there were, I'd get to a point and I would just try this platforming and I couldn't get it. I'd, I'd rage out and I'd just go, and I'd come to the next day and I'd clear it and yeah. then I'd get to the next room. Rage out, leave it for a day, and then come. Oh back. wow, okay. I just, I just couldn't get like platforming's never been my strong, strong suit. suit. The combat is schmick, and the the combat is the same in the second. Um, and like the the big, the first game was all about the this evil dude Kalaka wanting to uh, unite the worlds, the living and the dead. Yeah. Uh, in this one, there is a break in the Mexiverse, the, Mexiverse, the space-time continuum of, of the Mexican universe, um, and you go through a portal that takes you through, a, like you know, like we need to take you to this other timeline in the Mexiverse, and to get you there, it takes you through a world that looks like uh, lim- uh, not Limbo. Yeah, you know, like the, yeah, t- the black good. and white. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Just and as then you like, disappear, you see the spider leg come yeah. flying through. And then, then Retro City Rampage. And like, there's a bunch of like little nods. Cause, like the oh, humor okay. in the game is pretty on point. But then in this one, it's already a little funnier, which I, I like yeah. a lot. Something I've already noticed, and I've only put maybe an hour and a half into Guacamelee 2 so far. The first game was very meme It was like focusing on yeah. then, then current memes, which Correct. didn't necessarily age as well. Whereas what we're getting now is just references to other games, which as a gamer, you can kind of pick up and appreciate and they hold their value. Like you're talking about, you know, River City Rampage and all those like they're old games it's mm. like watching um, the first season of Family Guy all their you know um, meta pop culture yeah. references and you're just thinking that did not age well <laughs> at all and that, that was kind of the issue with the first Guacamelee because yeah. yeah there were a lot of like meme things and sort of like, internet like, like a lot of derps and stuff which I never really found funny to begin with so I'm like oh, I'm going to find it funny here um, but yeah no like, it, it, it's I'm looking forward to kicking through it because right now it is just killing time until Spooder Man which does come out in about a week and a half at this point but just, just shy of two Ooh, weeks get the embargo drops three days before yeah so hopefully our codes should be arriving this week you say our codes with a plural as in Paul and yeah ours. we're hoping oh. that we Paul and ours yeah we yeah, have to share yeah, yeah. <laughs> better put it on the pop scene. well I mean oh, it's, why would it's, I not? it may not go yeah because you can play it under your own account anyway <laughs> I'm part of a big team, so I may not get it. I get all them trophies. (laughs) But I've already got ideas for how I present the review if Mm. I do. I've got some different different approaches in place. I just want these fucking games so we have something to talk about. Mm. We could talk about $500 million controllers. (gasps) That's 500 million console controllers. 
So this, so this, so that didn't cost five hundred million dollars. Just, just me. As a scalper's release. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the five hundred million dollar uh, trans. Five hundred million dollar. Fuck you, John. Yeah, I know. I stu- no, but I stuffed up in the first place. Worldwide <laughs> units uh, sold a translucent blue controller. We'll get them, get them unboxing up close. Look at that beautiful. I should have left it in the box, knowing that I was coming here. Oh, oh, oh look, Josh. the stick moves. Oh. Don't touch it that way. Gentle, Josh. Gentle. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've touched it in ways that you'll never do. So, I assume you didn't pick up the controller. You just got the con- con- uh, sorry, the console. Just, just yeah, controller. just the controller. I've I've already got a pro. The pro's going well. Couldn't really justify getting another pro, you even though our one. original PS4 is well. Yeah, I did have the opportunity to pre-order. I did see it still there when yeah. I went to go pre-order this. Uh, Jess in the chat from the, the Patreon exclusive live stream. Schmick does say the controller looks schmick. It does, it does. look schmick. It looks real schmick. Oh, we'll keep it there. Are you actually glad you have, purchased it? Actually, have a news article in regards to. Ooh, we'll to come it, back. We'll it's come it's back so to smooth to touch. Like it's the texturing's different on the. Just like Josh. Josh. What have you been playing, Josh? No. Nothing. Like nothing. He's pretty smooth. Like literally nothing. What have you been doing the last week then? Uh, I got two assignments due for uni. Good boy. Studying for a test. Good boy. For uni, working. For uni. For uni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've just between Dead Cells and Rocket League. Whenever I get a spare hour or so, but no. You st- you still kick- have, you f- have you finished the Dead Souls campaign yet? No. I can get to the last boss pretty easy. I can't beat him, though. Oh, it g- it gets maddening. I've, um, he- I've heard that a little bit, yeah. Yeah. No, but it, it's still fucking good. I just haven't had a lot of time this week. Mm. I did buy a new guitar last yeah, night. Did. Yeah, I did. And it, it, it just kind insert of a little <laughs> guitar solo I've never had a guitar here. worth this much, ever. Do you mind me asking how many dollar dues was it? Uh, retail 500 at million thir- retail's at 1300 I got it for a thousand nice is this the one that you were looking talking about last week the one you wanted or is it equivalent different okay I decided oh. against that one why is that uh, it had a Floyd Rose bridge mm-hmm. which I, I don't want okay it makes a very, Floyd Rose here's a guitar lesson for you Floyd Rose bridges are super super good at holding your fucking tuning like that thing will not go out of tune yeah but to change your tuning it's a real big fuck around yeah and I change my tuning every time I play when I'm playing something yeah because you, like, it would be great for someone that was like a like a, a if, performer that yeah. had like four guitars yeah. and they if you had four that's stuck in that tune that's stuck in that tune for that song yeah but, like that's my drop D that's yeah. my whatever yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. have any so I opted against that which saved me a couple of dollars as well nice. um did it have all the good? Because I know you and Joel we're getting a bit meta here. Uh, jo- Joel and is from Anna Game is also a big guitar guitar player. And you got talking about the pickups and being good mm. for metal and stuff. Did mm. you get the same same kit? No, um, I got the pickups are very very good on it, but the they're not EMGs, mm. which are like no metal pickups. Um, man, man, but man, I don't man, just man, play man, metal; man, I play man, a lot of man, different man. things as well. Um, so I've got a really very good nice. I've got yeah. a really good well rounded guitar. Yeah, um, and it's kind of amazing going from my three hundred dollar one that I had to playing this. It's fucking incredible. Like, I thought, like, when I was playing, I'm like, yeah, you know, there's a bit of feedback and I'm not too good at, like, hitting the notes. No, that's a guitar. I played the same song on this new one and I'm like, I am a fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds clearer I am and better. The guitar and hero. But yeah, because the pickups are such a good quality, they, don't, they manage to filter out all, like, your string rubbing and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So you get a very crystal clear sound on it. Um, yeah, I'm already starting to get blisters on my fingers. Oh, that's nice. I, had a bottle of wi- I got a bottle of whiskey last night to celebrate as well. <laughs> you went all rock star. Yeah. Now I was sitting in just in my box of shorts <laughs> <laughs> with a fat cigar and three girls in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <didn't> <laughs> uh, but no, I, just, I haven't played anything and nothing new. I finished Chasm. Oh, just was, continuing yeah. this kind of Metroid. How was Chasm? Sort of, yeah. Um, so it's it was procedurally good. developed to an extent. So. Like the whole idea with the procedure developed game is there's like a seed and you get that seed and that kind of this is all maths sort of thing really but um, in this case you can actually nominate your seed so if you want to play sorry no no it's you, just, you can sit there oh, and just, just re the mic yeah, okay. um, if we want to play the same game the exact same world the exact same if you find thing, a super can, good layout yeah then can I can just go hey Ryan jump in uh, this seed boom and he, he mm. types it in that's it and he plays the same game that I did okay. which I think is really re- really cool outside of that it's a pretty stock standard sort of uh, Metroidvania game it's a very uh, um, not flooded market but there's so much competition there's here. a lot coming out with Guacamole and Death Gambit and Dead Cells Hollow Knight, and, Hollow Knight. Um, and that's the ones that are just getting media attention yeah there's yeah. so many more so, so it's a hard market to crack into but Chasm's been in development for 
fucking ages. It now. does seem like uh, I don't know. I, I haven't followed Death Gambit as much. It seems like Chasm might be the one that if you're going to miss one out of this whole batch, it could be that. It's the one that's yeah, probably gotten the least but buzz. I think Death, Death Gambit is supposed to be quite difficult. At yeah, the same okay. time. Well, I think Chasm was supposed to be the big buzz, and then the week after with Dead Cells, and they kind of just well, instantly stomped them we out. We can thank Philip Newson for that. So oh, aside, he kind of he got all the yeah. attention. Yeah, Put like all, all that all that uh, plagiarism fuss was nothing but good for Dead Cells. Mm. Yeah, because so many people watched Boomstick's review, watched the comparison video, and then watched the whole conversation into, and got, got sucked into. Saw it. the conversation, got roped into watching the updated IGN review, which was a very good uh, review. So it's nothing but good for Motion Twin. And Dead yeah, Cells. in his video, he's like, I'm really sorry to Motion Twin. They're like, it's fine. Yeah, they're like... Can you do it again? In, in their bathtubs <laughs> of money, they're just like, it's okay. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool, man. It's We're starting cool. to work on a sequel. Can you, can you just... Yeah, yeah. Do it again for our next game, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you? Well, I think Chasm. Well, actually, give us your thoughts on Chasm. Like, give us like a bit of a... Like, like I said, just solid. Oh, I spoke about that whole seeding thing. And outside of that, it's a pretty stock standard Metroidvania at that point. It doesn't do anything super crazy mm-hmm. it's, it's a it's good simple. entry point to the yeah, it, is, it is a good entry point um like it's how, got some rpg systems in there so you are leveling up as you play through mm. um does it get is it difficult like is it hard if i was put on a scale of one to ten i'd say maybe a five difficulty yeah, it's, 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 it's not gonna right, break cool. you like you you can if you prepared a little bit of time and i didn't find myself grinding all that much it's not hard. just as i'm exploring i'm bouncing around and as a result i'm killing things as i go so i'm getting more xp yeah. so kind of part of the exploration allowed me to level up to the point i needed to then not like Hollow Knight levels of difficulty. No, that but even then, even then, Hollow Knight has didn't cause me massive I'm troubles. I'm stuck on. I'd probably so I'd probably say that's a seven or eight. Soul though. vessel. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the boss I got stuck on. Yeah. And it literally killed me to killed my will to want to go back and play the that's game. That's a shame. Because I was stuck on it for like a week. I just went. I'm done. I just can't play this game anymore. Yeah, I managed to find a way to finish that amongst uh, Octopath Travel that came out at the same time. Like all oh, these games for Switch. PlayStation podcast, I know. Um, yeah, it's fine. But we can mention. I mean, we're going to be talking about Hollow Knight shortly, so I got I got into a Reddit fight about the Switch. Oh, do you want to, can you want to yeah, that before we jump in? Oh, someone just put up a statement from um, Miyamoto saying, you know, games companies need to be careful about getting too greedy. And I'm like, I said, I agree with his statement, but can you tell me why I'm paying ten percent more? F- to 20% more for indies on the Switch. <laughs> you fucking hate them. And then someone's trying to have like a good conversation. You know, it could be to, to do they get con- drowned out. Could be to do with conversion rates at the time, you know, when they put it on. I'm like, yeah, it's a fair or, point. Or the, you know, the cost of the cartridge. Yeah, the, you got to pay for the cost of the cartridge. But even the digital version still. And then someone's like, it costs money to port, so you're paying for that. I'm like, fuck that. That's not an answer. Yeah, it just, it got like fucking, like two, my comment got like 2,000 upvotes, which is quite a bit for yeah. me. And it had like a 300 comment chain going on it. I just I turned off notifications. I'm like I'm done. <laughs> so I've got nothing more to add. To I've this. lit the fire and I just so, yeah. <laughs> watch, so what was the percentage smaller. of people that were actually genuinely conversing with you? Twenty. That's quite with high for the internet. Directly, but then in that comment thread, someone else can have their own. If someone replies to my comment, someone can reply to their comment, yeah. and then they have their own little sub comment in my comment. So to me directly, it's probably about I don't know good 20 or 30 people were actually like it could be this could be that maybe here's an example so having a general con- that's a good conversation yeah. about it but Very I just nice. ended up you know, after about an hour I was like I, just, I don't care anymore yeah. <laughs> let's, I, let's, I said my piece and yeah. let's jump into the section where we tell you the PlayStation news that happened this week in a section we call inform the players number one which we just added in Breaking in a, news. Breaking news. <laughs> in a Twitter post from Sony Santa Monica studio God of War director Corey Balrog is it, it's Balrog Balrog, Balrog. Balrog. Somebody. Balrog's the awesome this, beast yeah, from Lord this, of the Rings. This, uh, Do you copy and paste that directly? I copy and paste fucking everything. Announced that there will be an audiobook version what? of the game story. Even better, the story will be narrated by Mimir, the talking head that accompanies the Trace and Kratos on their journey. You can check out the announcement video on IGN. The video also shows us a quick preview of Mimir's voice actor, Alastair Duncan, in action, so listeners can get a quick taste of what they can expect to hear. The audiobook will be available on August 28th so the day after this podcast goes hells out. to the year I was expecting you know it'll be available later this year but they're like no it's done it's, you can Hell. pre-order it now, it now on like Amazon yeah. audio book thing and all that cool oh yeah sounds cool I needs it so does my, Jesse in the chat so it's, <laughs> it's, it's just weird that we're getting an audio book of a game has that happened before well there's a novelis- there's, like there was a novelisation that was, that was released and I saw it came out actually I was yeah like, we, oh. we get those because it was actually uh, Corey Balog's dad that wrote it correct yeah yeah, um, yeah. and it was a real loving on Twitter when that 
mm. finally got released. That was pretty cool. But I've not, I don't think I've have we seen an audio book of a game before that? Like, I, I, it's I weird think it's such an auditory platform anyway. I don't think there's an audio book of a novelization of a game. I don't think that that set, yeah. that's that flow mm. exists before. I mean, we've had a game based on a movie based on a game, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, but like having, but <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, having Mimir come in and do it is good because like his entire role in the in the game is to tell stories. And you don't realize like your boat trips when he's telling stories when you do eventually get to the end of the dialogue pool mm. fucking sucks going around in your boat in just dead silence because there's no more conversations to pull from like everything has been said um, still it's cool that they did that rather than kind of go the old gamey sort of thing alright let's just start the loop again and we'll yeah, just no, start so hearing the I'd rather silence just and go I've got nothing else to say and just listen to the end of the story yeah. like I got yeah, to where I, would, I want to be I, I got laps. to where I want to be but I'm just going to like go make a coffee and turn the volume up as they're yeah going. it's and awesome games just don't do that They, ca- it's very hard to evoke that kind of interest mm. um, but yeah no I'll get it definitely it's like 15 bucks I think on Amazon easy so that's easy done uh, and New Game Plus is actually live now last we heard yeah people are loving it mm. absolutely loving it number two if you weren't one of the lucky few able to get your hands on a 500 million limited edition PlayStation 4 Pro there's a silver lining the limited edition accessories can still be obtained because only 50,000 of these beauties were produced, chances of getting one were always slim. However, Sony is still selling the limited edition DualShock 4 and the gold limited edition headset separately. They're still up for grabs. Naturally, many of these consoles are already appearing online with sales on eBay listing them for nearly $4,000. Fuck them. <laughs> I had, I had well, I'm going to sell them. this for $500 million, as we've established. Hey. So. I have seen a couple of these in uh, the consoles in the wild. Some of the mm-hmm. people that we follow on uh, Instagram have, p- have picked one up. Yeah, Nice. Um, an example is uh, you know, Dave Brown, who's the old one that also recommended the controller stand for the, the God of War controller back there. Which looks fantastic. It does cool. look schmick on that stand. Um, yeah, no, it that looks... That would also look schmick on that stand. I, uh, don't tempt me. <laughs> Do not tempt me. <laughs> I'm not going to have this controller by the time I leave, will I? No. But I mean, what it's can cool. you do without <laughs> scalpers? Nothing. 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 It's, not, it's not illegal. It's moral, mm. in my opinion, but it's not illegal. But it does suck that it's such a limited pool and X amount, any percent of them just being flipped on ebay really well so i actually sucks. heard um a story out of america this morning because they didn't have the long pre-order i mean not not that it was a long time but the the amount of time between availability or announcement and then release they went on sale i think this morning or something like that um there was a guy who had about eight different devices i guess phones ipads computers whatever he had they're all <laughs> refreshing and he's trying to get himself a console Minority report. didn't and then there's some other guy that pops up and red and goes i got eight and he's scalping them all Outside of, I guess, one that might keep for himself. I don't know like, why you wouldn't it's just, put it's, a limit of, you know, max two per customer or yeah, something Yeah, but he's probably like logged that. in with different email accounts yeah, and too. get get your way around it. Mm. But, um, but Like, in, this, in the same vein, though, like, I really want... Uh, I want one of the grey 20th anniversary controllers. Mm. Or the console, even. But I don't have, like, thousands of dollars no. to spend on it. Can you not get the grey... No, oh. not, not easily. But then not everyone's scalping it either. Someone might buy it and then see what they're going for and then it's up to them to decide... Well, I was going to use it, but I can literally quadruple my money that I yeah. spent. Yeah. And for me, I'll be like, I'm, all right, I'll sell it. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's how, it's how a market works. Yeah, like, yeah free market is yeah. a thing. But, but like, if you could hold on to it, like uh, packaged for 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. Ooh. I think I think the, a lot of people you were know, obviously collectors that wanted to jump on there and you know they'll probably end up buying. They're the anyway. good. They're the good guys. Yeah. Um. You know, because they're the people that would have four other PS4 Pros unnecessarily. Um. So like a, those go, yeah, yeah, it's tough. It, it, they were it's celebrating tough. 500 million. <laughs> Mate, why didn't they do 500,000 instead mm. of 50,000? You know. It would I, make I, things I, far I know more limited is is a thing, but that's very very Yeah, but like what if, what's even impressive as well. And like it's it's dick that they only did 15,000. 50. 50,000, yeah. sorry. Um but in the, in the same vein like they didn't overprice it. It was exactly Oh yeah, no. Like no. they were like it's the fifteen thousand, and it's literally the price of PS4 Pro. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine if they were like, "It's fifty thousand, and it's hundred on for dollars more." Well, now people have to buy them for two thousand yeah, dollars more true. at the same time. But the, yeah, Sony yeah, the market. Sony's Sony's seen seen it's got nothing to do with Sony, of course. Yeah. none of that stuff. But it it is just it's unfortunate. It's a bit poops. Uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night has been delayed to 2019, and the PlayStation Vita version has been cancelled. Announced by Koji. 
Igarashi to Kickstarter backers and via YouTube. He explains that this delay allows the team to further raise the quality level, especially after the beta backer demo. Furthermore, Igar also announced that development on the PS Vita version has been stopped and will no longer launch on Sony's handheld. This decision by the team is largely due to Sony's plans to discontinue the Vita console, ending production of physical copies and stopping certain online store support features. Backers who chose Vita as their console of choice can choose a different platform or get a refund. Now, on, top, on top, on top of that, the Viking funeral it's worth noting, uh, I meant to put this in the quick news last week, but I couldn't find an article to support it, but a developer for Unity said that the next Unity update will no longer support PlayStation Vita as well. Mm. So we're really in like... The Vita, this, no, this is it. This is the Vita no longer lives. If you it's don't nice. have Unity it's support for the Vita, fire that's your pretty arrows. much that's, that's the Viking, the Viking funeral that just took place. <laughs> I don't need this no more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it is unfortunate for people that wanted on the Vita, and it does suck that it was delayed again. Because I think it was meant to originally come out in like 2017 or something. Yeah, it's been but the game looks times. fucking awesome. Like I'm so keen for it, and you know, I think putting it to 2019 is alright because the end of this year is just fucking stacked. Like, yeah, like, yeah, and like with, uh, I believe it's the guy that sort of helped with Castlevania originally. Yeah, he so he, he he did Ca- Symphony of the Night. Yeah, so like this will be the be- like the best of the Metroidvania. For like, sure, you think right? Absolutely. So I having mean, it, we did see Mighty Number no. Nine. It was developed by the guy who was responsible for Mega Man. Yeah, yeah perhaps right. so. Yeah. Sorry, uh, uh, it was slight bit like, of cynicism. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 your cynicism, like, your cynicism is, is found here because we are cynical all the time. But um, The difference is, though, he's very active on Kickstarter and yeah. communication. Yeah, his communication's everyone. been he's great. always updating and stuff. Did you guys try a Curse of the Moon, the kind no. of prequel no. thing? So that yeah. was actually really good. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's more of a just a 2D action platform less Metroidvania aspects to it it was very linear and the big, but the big advantage of moving to 2019 it's getting away from all the Metroidvanias that are out now mm-hmm. yeah you know what I mean so that's going to give them a bit of, yeah. bit of leap so the, yeah the delay doesn't faze me too much but it was more the news that they're like we're not doing beta anymore yeah. which is kind of it's, every time it's just like it's just hammering yeah. it down it's it's over and that's unfortunate <laughs> I mean, it is gone. Cyberpunk 2077 has hit a development milestone with CD Projekt Red explaining that the game is now playable from start to finish internally. In an interview with End Gadget, producer Richard Borziamowski explained that the game I butchered that <laughs> explained that the game Go can be it. played through from beginning to end with the story in place. It's still missing assets, includes bugs and reg- requires playtesting, but it's a major step. Quote, it gives you answers to all of our doubts, he said. Bor- Borziamowski said. It just feels great. Despite that step forward, Cyberpunk 2077's release date still remains something of a mystery. Even down to what year it will arrive in, CDPR says they are targeting current-gen consoles, which, based on recent reports, puts it at some point before the end of 2020. However, creator, uh, Cyberpunk creator Mike Pondsmith has cautioned that perfection takes time. So playable start to end is pretty fucking cool. Mm. I didn't... I didn't like, not, cause pl- like, cause like, after reading Blood, Sweat and Pixels, form. which I've nearly finished... It's good, isn't it? So it's good. Not, uh, it doesn't seem common that they will get the story and everything in place and then go back and do it. Mm. That seems like a different way of doing things. Is that right? Mm. Is that there? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, because you usually got like quest designers and stuff that are adding things yeah. right up till a couple months before yeah. release. Yeah. That's, that's you know, why they, we, that's they why we see a lot of and they're like, with, oh, this zone feels a bit empty. Let's chuck a couple more quests in there. Yeah, and that's why we see a lot of those issues with games going gold and then there's you know massive day one patches because they're actually still mm. adding content as opposed mm. to just visual assets or well, sound effects uh, or Dragon whatever. Dragon Age Inquisition did. Love mm. Sweat and Pixels, Jason Shry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really good book. Uh, what's, uh, playable doesn't mean that it's ship ready. Like it oh, me- no, no, not it means like It means you, you you as a character can run through that and do whatever. Yeah. It's a I mean, wireframe like wire person. Yeah, it could be yeah. wireframe. It could be very bland textures. Great, no textures. It could be nothing. Yeah. Uh, but it is a good milestone. And it, 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 is, it, it is cool that they seem to be on track. I Is think it? it. I still think it'll be a cross-gen release, like The Last of Us and all that was. You know, PS, mm. PS and a PS4, and on PS5. Well, something. where do you see it landing? Given they're saying by the end of 2020, my tip's early 2020. Yeah, two years from now. So end of 2020. Think, I don't think early. Well, it depends when they're going to put out. Well, even early 2020 is still 18 months from now. Yeah. So 18 is 24 months. So I think it's fair. The Dark Souls trilogy has been announced for the PS4 and Xbox One. It's been given an October release date, priced at 80 US dollars. The Dark Souls trilogy is a three-game compilation featuring Dark Souls Remastered, Dark Souls 2: Scholar of the First Sin, and Dark Souls 3: The Fire Fades Edition, packaged in an exclusive steelbook case. The compilation also includes all previously released DLC content. The Dark Souls trilogy will be released on October 19th, 2018. Fuck in like a month and a half it's the same day that Dark Souls comes to the Switch yeah physical copies Finally. will be available yeah. in limited quantities so you need to pre-order the collection to ensure physical copy at launch that's a cool 
That's cool. Actually. Yeah, so like that is fucking awesome. Dark Souls two and three have all already been on PS three, uh, PS four for a while. Now with the remaster, it's cool to have it in a big box set because like box. Dark Souls fans are rabid. All so three games, die. all the DLC, like that's really cool. You mush that together in a package, and I wish. And it gets more revved up because then you've got Sekiro that comes out six months yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know this yeah, is this won't be published by Activision like Sekiro, to... but it's still the same. Yeah, developer. it's probably the best time to launch it actually. Like, well, yeah. close enough to Sekiro, but far enough away that it doesn't impact. Yeah, with all the hype that's liked, coming from there. I wish I liked Dark Souls more. Mm. I mean, I love it. I love the idea of it. And I've said it before, you know, the aesthetic and fucking everything. I love it so much. I just, I don't have the patience or the Breaks skill. Breaks your soul. Yeah, I just, I just don't have it in me to actually play through the games, which is a shame. I yeah. wish there was an easy mode. That's the one thing on Reddit that will get you fucking crucified. <laughs> Dark Souls have an easier mode. Fucking get good. <laughs> Fuck in <laughs> Top selling games from the week ending of last week. I forgot to get the date. Starting at number 10, Detroit Become Human. Number 9, Far Cry 5. Number 8, PlayStation Hits, Ratchet and Clank. Number 7, GTA 5. Number 6, PlayStation Hits, Uncharted 4. Number 4, We Happy Few. Number 3, God of War. Number 2, PlayStation Hits, The Last of Us. Number 1, Madden 19. Madden was also the top of last week because at the time of recording we didn't have that list and we mm. speculated God of War was. <laughs> yeah. It is weird to see The Last of Us above God of War. But that's the perk of the PlayStation Hits thing. You see yeah. Uncharted 4 and Ratchet and Clank drop in there. It's, and it's been the same three yeah. since they announced it. And I think JB Hi-Fi at the moment in Australia is doing two PlayStation Hits for $40 as well. Damn, that's nice. Like the physical, that helps. The mm. physical copies, which is really cool as well. Detroit still went... Detroit's almost out. Yeah, it's, it's there. It's been slowly getting there. Um, it doesn't have much longer in there, I don't think. Either does GTA, I don't think. But once we get into September and October, once Red Dead actually comes along, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, people G- who like Rockstar's games have a new Rockstar game to go play, you'll see GTA drop off that list. All right, and the quick bits of news: uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice will be released on March twenty second, twenty nineteen. Ubisoft will not release a new Assassin's Creed game in twenty nineteen. Yes. Rocket League's major overhaul to progression and leveling launches on the twenty ninth of August, with the new Rocket Pass releasing a week later. And Hollow Knight is coming to the PS4 in 2019. Yep. Rocket Pass, fucking oath. <laughs> keen as. I am so keen. Because Rocket League is my junk food game. Yep. Just when I can't be fucked, I'm going to boot up Rocket League and play some games. And they've, they've had a long, long time thing of just like leveling means fucking nothing. So with the Rocket Pass, similar to how Fortnite does it, you'll get new car so bodies. So it is like their Battle Pass. Yeah, yeah, pretty okay. much. You get new car bodies, you'll get new skins for your cars, new decorations, you'll get keys you can use to unlock your prize boxes, which is like your loot box kind of thing. Cool. I'm fucking, I'm keen as. Uh, Sekiro releasing in March is a very busy time. Uh, Jess has confirmed, because I sent her all the PR emails. She goes, the email said aiming for March 22nd, so it's not a confirmed release date. But it's According not yeah, to all I'd, the websites, I'd, they've confirmed. I'd say that bait. yeah, they're aiming for it. It's <laughs> they're you, you, this, you don't put a date the out there unless, unless that is yeah. the date you're which, locking in. Which also, if that's the wording in the press release, from that's direct from the peoples. And mm. that's, that's them going, yeah, we may not hit it. <laughs> yeah, but again, uh, they'll probably want it in the fiscal year. Yeah, true. Yeah, probably. Ubisoft not releasing a new Assassin's Creed. Cool. And so this is the thing. <laughs> we had a dis- I, had dis- I, had met- I dropped on your, your and Jono's thread on Twitter about yeah, this. Yeah, I had an Insider episode go up and then um, that spun a conversation off. Lovely. Insider. Play two. <laughs> cool. uh, yeah, so like I was baffled that they announced that Odyssey was coming out this year as well. Because mm. I thought, you know, I was, for me it was like they learnt their lesson and they took the break. They come out with Origins. Origins was across the board well loved and they're like and we've got another one and a lesson yeah I'm like what are you doing but I don't know whether this is a response to everyone going what the fuck or it's them just doubling down on the one game for some reason so what Eve's actually said when he announced it was and again I, I did a proper insider episode on it so I kind of did all my research but um, he uh, was talking about how both games were being developed simultaneously Mm. Um, and they were sharing a lot of assets and all that sort of thing, which meant that the two were always going to come out back to back, but then there was going to be a break. So it's not a product of people necessarily you know, poo-pooing the idea. It's just that we got both games out and now we need to start this cycle again. Mm. Um, does it mean they're going to release two games back to back? I don't know. Did Give, they mention- given some of the commentary around it. Um, well, that, that would put the I, next I would love Assassin's to do Creed it. game towards the launch of next-gen consoles. Yeah, 2020. And Black Flag games. was one of the launch... It straddled both, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I've still never played an Assassin's Creed game for more than an hour. So. Yeah, I put a whole bunch of time into Origins. Oh, man. Uh, and Hollow Knight is cool. 
Yeah, it, it deserves all the love it gets, even though I got stuck and I'm like, Egh. yeah, but trophies. It's still, it's still awesome, great, though. Yeah, and still trophies. Though those trophies are gonna be assholes. Well, so Shovel hate us. One of Shovel Knight's trophies is beat the game without dying. Yeah. Once. Not for me. Fuck it, I'll die eight times in the first 30 minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it for the news. As we have a chat to the players about Paul's topic, which is... Oh, we're doing it there. Right. Yep. Um, so it was kind of inspired by what happened at E3. We're going all the way back to E3 here where Microsoft acquired five new studios, brought them into the family. And I th- it kind of got me thinking about, and it's been something I've been stewing on for a little while, I was like, what... Um, franchises or franchises or developers could PlayStation look to bring into the fold mm-hmm. because I looked at kind of what's happened this generation we got off to a very slow start and I'm not t- just talking about the quality but the actual fre- like frequency of titles we got Infamous we got um, Killzone we got oh, we don't, probably don't want to talk about The Order too much but and we, Knack. like we and Knack but we didn't get that many games in that first three years 2013 through 15 mm-hmm. Bloodborne kind of started to kick everything off in 2015 and then in the years since it's you know something a couple of big things every quarter You're probably looking at four big name things yeah. every and what I thought there is if we can get some we like we're bloody PlayStation executives but we're putting those hats on mm. um uh if we could kind of look at what developers could come into the fold then that um might help bolster their portfolio throughout the entire generation. We don't just have to wait four years for another Naughty Dog game or the next Horizon or whatever it happens to be. There's actually a, f- a steady trickle at all times. Mm-hmm. Now, for so, reference, with Xbox, they purchase Undead Labs, who do State of Decay, which is already an Xbox exclusive. Uh, they got Playground, which do Forza uh, Horizon, Forza, which is already an Xbox exclusive. An RPG of some um, sort. Then you've got Com- uh, Compulsion. Yep. Who are the guys behind We, uh, Happy, we Few. Happy Few? Which, but judging by the by the success of We Happy Few, questionable decision. Mm. Uh, and then you've got the Initiative, which is the brand new studio they're working on. What was the fifth one? Ninja Theory. Ninja the Theory. That's right. That was a solid purchase. The best one out of all. Of best one out of all opinion. by far. Um, I don't, I don't even know. Even though I, mean, I haven't the, played Hellblade. The, the Initiative is a quadruple A game. They yeah, but so. they weren't going to see shit for them. <laughs> <for> <laughs> four years. That's, that's what they're calling. Me. It's the biggest wank. <laughs> so I think the most obvious pick right off the go is Super Massive. Yep. I mean, PlayStation have published their last four games. Yeah, uh, Until Dawn, Unt- Unt- The Impatient, The Impatient, Unt- Bravo Unt- Team. Rush of Blood, and Bravo Team. Yeah, and so they also did Hidden Agenda. The, yes, they did. The they did too. The last five games. Thingo game. So it just it makes Play-Link. sense Play-Link. now. Supermassive have uh, announced at Gamescom they're working on some new stuff, which seems to be it will be multiplat. It is multiplat. Yeah. Um, but I think it was probably a missed opportunity. Oh, you made a little list. I, hey. To, hey. I was driving today and I managed to use a pen at the same time. <laughs> Uh, but I think it was a missed opportunity for PlayStation after, probably after Until Dawn came out, and they're like, because they obviously know in advance that they're going to be publishing the next whatever. Mm. And when they're looking like, well, for the next four years, they're basically our studio. Until Dawn went gangbusters out of nowhere. We should probably scoop them up. Uh, but you also got to think, maybe some developers don't want that. Either. Yeah. Which actually led to the one that I had first on my list. Um, I had Insomniac, which yeah, it's it's a weird spot that they're in um, because yeah, they don't they want to remain independent. Yeah, I'll just jump in and say Insomniac was the first in my in my head um, list as well. Yeah, they, they were the first one that came to mind. They want to be independent though, which which is which is tricky, but um, they've also got so many IP that they love working on that are attached exclusively to PlayStation. So mm-hmm. Ratchet, Spider Man, currently. Um, Resistance is still locked there, even though they've said we're probably not going to get back to it. Yeah. Like, there's all these IP Shame. that if they ever wanted to go back to them, they have to play ball with PlayStation. It can only be on PlayStation. But and I feel like Adventure Overdrive. Yeah, on but my it didn't Xbox sell, so well. they probably mm. don't should have much. Have. It should have. It's amazing, um, but it didn't unfortunately, and I, so they probably won't go back to it. Um, and I just feel like at some point there's going to be this weight of IP that like we want to just keep working on these whatever they happen to be for some reason and they're all attached to PlayStation we're like well maybe we just join the family like it's probably going to save us money there's fund us yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it'll be better for their business going forward and the PlayStation family we hear all this commentary all the time that PlayStation just lets the teams go out and do what they need to do their way so why not have those resources mm. the funding's important um, and it takes a bit of stress off it would like that, that would be a massive stress relief in terms of, yeah, like you do have that protective net, yeah. Um, and with the name, you can like, work with Naughty Dog all the time. Exactly, they they could share. They could like maybe they could get in, in on this than that. The Decima engine yeah. that seems to be coming, the you know, it's slowly trickling out amongst the PlayStation Studios. Maybe that's going to be the same as EA with Frostbite. Maybe yeah. they're trying to do something like that. Um, 
we know with with the success of Spider Man, there which is we know it's going to probably do well. Uh, it, they will very likely be at a place where they will become associated with PlayStation, yeah. obviously a big one, and they'll they'll maybe pump into that higher tier that we that we, that we saw Gorilla Punch into. That yeah. we, we know that Naughty Dog sits like maybe they'll make that. And Sony that Santa Monica through. now after God of War. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think Spider Man will be the catalyst for it. Mm. I reckon they will in probably the next. 12 months okay um, I just, yeah I think Spider-Man will be the catalyst it'll go gangbusters so it'll be like Ratchet and Clank did super well Spider-Man did super well they're both exclusive on the Playstation just come on yeah board. and in the same vein if, if, well, with Sunset Overdrive and Spider-Man like I remember the rumor, the rumor mill, the Sucker Punch were working on uh, the Spider-Man game for a while. Yeah. Mm. So it's, with Sucker Punch now going in a different direction, that brings Insomniac be able to come in and maybe take on Infamous, maybe do something like that. Mm. Please give us more Infamous. As in, as in like bring that skill set over, allow Sucker Punch to go do whatever they want to do, bring yeah. these guys in. Mm-hmm. You know, as you said, it adds to their portfolio yeah. of really cool IP they get to work on. Mm-hmm. And they are competitive still. They want to one up xbox and xbox has just gotten five studios mm. so why not you don't necessarily have to try and get more than that but get a few big is, names is high profile and that people talk again when spider-man does well if sony don't scoop up insomniac and then insomniac like now we're working on a game for playstation and xbox people are like, well they're the guys that made spider-man and you know the games on xbox so it's they're getting all this exposure to the gaming world for the PlayStation game, but then they can be like, oh, we're going to make games for Xbox, which only yeah. helps them as well. Um, but but it's it like does PlayStation help Xbox, because PlayStation the boosts... Yeah. Exactly. PlayStation is boosting them up, and Xbox can receive the benefits for it, mm. you know, having that such a big developer name. And that sort of concept actually led to another one I had on my list. I had FromSoft. That was, I, was like, I thought we were going to get in the line. The FromSoft was going to be my next sorry, one. Oh. That's, that worked out well. Because well, yeah, From, FromSoft would have been my second pick <laughs> after Insomniac. Simply because they they really missed a chance with Demon Souls. Because after, with, you know, they Demon Souls being a, yeah, being a PS3 exclusive, they really should have jumped on that. Like, I don't think at the time they would have realised what that Soulsborne genre would be or the success it would be. So I understand why they put that aside at the time. But with Dark Souls and then with Bloodborne being exclusive as well, obviously a tail contract off Demon yeah. Souls, um, you'd think they would want to come in and jump jump Lock on it down. that. However, with the success of Dark Souls and, and, that, and that genre, I don't see FromSoft wanting to be exclusive anywhere. Well, I guarantee you that after Sekiro is done and dusted that Bloodborne 2 will be next from them. Mm. I, can, yeah. I don't see why it wouldn't be. I think they're done with Dark Souls for now. They've got the trilogy all nice and wrapped up. They've got their new IP going, but I... Sony will want a sequel to Bloodborne. Oh yeah, they're probably and they'll, they'll probably they've already they've hand probably over already fist. talked about it. It's probably already all hashed out and everything. But that'll be next from them, from 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 from. from, from. from. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> all of a sudden. But uh, yeah, just throwing money at them for Bloodborne too, easy. And that like that was my big point around FromSoft when it comes to actually being acquired that it probably won't happen because because I don't know it's probably worth five times more than what they were prior oh, no. to yeah, the Demon success Souls, of yeah. Dark Souls and Demon Souls and all them. So it's going to be a bit harder. They'd have to be prepared to fork out a lot more money to make it happen. Yeah, and I agree. The, it's also cool how From are so... They've got their genre down. This is what they're good at. But they're so willing to just mix it up and do whatever. Like well, they're doing a VR game. The gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Which doing is a VR game VR. as well. But Sekiro has like the same kind of combat, but it's more stealthy. you got like grappling hooks, so you got cool movement and all that. So they're willing to just kind of keep iterating on their thing and yeah Sony probably should have picked them up shortly after Bloodborne's success yeah so they had their chance with yeah Demon's Souls and they had a second chance and they fucked it yeah they muffed it well, maybe, maybe they didn't fuck it maybe From were just like Mm-mm. they could have Which, maybe, you know, for all we know there may have been a conversation yeah, yeah. they might, could have been ready to sign the paper and then just gone actually no I don't want it PlayStation just needs to send Mark Cerny in there he no. wins everyone over mm. <laughs> He's just this golden child that... No, what they need to do is assemble an elite team of top-tier Sony devs, like um, you just Neil Druckmann and now. Corey Barlog, as, like, they're the ones to go and convince people to join the family. You know, you got, like, three of the three or four of the biggest so, names in and PlayStation And they walk in with a framed picture of Kojima, because he's with them too now. Come on! <laughs> Come on! No! Come on! <laughs> But imagine having like the, all the biggest respected names in Sony's development studios come to you and be mm. like, this is why we And they're think. pitching you, yeah. Yeah, they're pit- they're, they do the pitch. This is why we think. So it wouldn't be so corporate-like if one of the, you know, 
just executives walked in there and be like, no, 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 like we're developers as well and we think this would benefit you because here's all our experiences. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to have like a task force, like the Sony task force, the pitch task force. Abandon something. your games for six months, yeah. go around and speak to these people. Yeah. You guys aren't releasing anything for the rest of this generation. Fuck off. Go do yeah. something cool. Yeah. Go earn your, earn your contract. What about you, Josh? What's your, what's your sec? Well, what else would do you have on that one? list? I don't. You have another one? No. Paul? I've <laughs> still got a little list, but yeah, super massive, super massive was my big one. Yeah. And I totally agree with it. Yeah. All right, what else have you got on that list? I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of some of their, their games, but don't not. Don't not actually. So, yeah. Life is Strange. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the games themselves. Like, I'm hopeful that Life is Strange 2 is alright because I had watched the first trailer and I didn't see, didn't hear the word Halla added at all, which was nice. Um, Operation, Operation PlayStation, PlayStation, which is nice. Just, um, <laughs> like his custom fuck, shirts. Which we should have renamed. We, that should be the name of the show. Fuck for the players. Operation PlayStation. <laughs> You've just given me the name of my future PlayStation. <laughs> <show>. <laughs> Trademark um, Jess Stevenson. Uh, I don't know. Like, it adds something different to the portfolio. We are like the one bit of negative feedback that goes gets directed at PlayStation at the moment is all the games coming out are very similar. Mm-hmm. I think um, I said that last week or the yeah, week we before? Yeah, we bitched about it last week, week before. Yeah, and so. like it's founded. Um, but Life is Strange is something very different. Mm. Um, they they had an opportunity to work with him in the past back when uh, Remember Me was coming to PS3 oh, yeah. and they dropped it rightly because the game was pretty mediocre That's in funny, the That's I didn't remember it. Oh. Um, and like they're, they're now working on Multiplayer games in Life is Strange and Twin Mirror and a few other bits and pieces like they're they're growing they've been successful and they're not so big yet that they can't potentially pull an Insomniac mm. so Good point. I feel like they're a team that I think they could be picked up they are going from publisher to publisher like Twin Mirror is I mean I got the press release that said that came from Namco um, uh, Square Enix publishes what do you call it um Life is Strange, there's Vampire or Vampire or whatever we call Speaking it. Speaking of Vampire, they they are making a TV show based on Yeah, it. Yeah, so I don't know, I just feel like they're a studio that's ripe for picking. Yeah. By any publisher, whoever that happens to be. They should get Yacht Club. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that would be a good pick. Mm. Even though Yacht Club are literally rolling in the fucking money now. <laughs> and, Shovel Knight is and appearing Nintendo's Super money. Smash Brothers. I mean, like that is like the coolest indie success thing going around. Um so your club are probably like, I think we're all right. Yeah. But I just I'd love to see just a smaller developer. It doesn't mm. none, none of this big, you one. know, double A, triple A stuff. Just find a really good indie developer that does really good fucking platformers or something. So my, scoop them up. My goes the other way. So my second isn't actually a dev, it's more of IPs. So what they need to do is they need to go to Konami and cool, say give me here. give me Castlevania. <laughs> give me Silent Hill, and depending on the, depending on the dollar he does, give us Metal Gear. They won't because Metal they, Gear will they, walk they, out. All their, their all their pachinko missions oh, and all that. They never will. Like they, they never or a shared license, as in like we'll make the pachinkos and whatever, but you make the games. Like share the license in the same way that you know Marvel has mm. Spider Man the character, so only has the game and movie rights to Spider Man. Mm. In the same vein, so. I know this is something that will never fucking happen, but like Metal Gear is associated with PlayStation for many, many people. So like it would it would be a smart thing to come across. Now I'm not saying then Kojima has to work on it. <laughs> not, not no, he not, wouldn't. He wouldn't want to. He'd probably vomit. He probably would have nothing to do. I with wouldn't rule out the possibility he'd walk out. Yeah. If, or they'd they'd speak to him and like, how do you feel about this? And he goes. He's like, it's me he's or like, the IP. He's like, Take I, your pick. He, I have managed, it, it depends. I think the bad blood is more with Konami rather than the product. But it probably brings up. Yeah, I'm sure it brings up some stuff. But, uh, uh, it's, if they were to buy it and give it to somebody else, if they were to buy Metal Gear IP and say, Kojima, this is your baby, and we're gonna let you do whatever who, the fuck you want. Who do you, you want, want it to go with? That or you can have it and you can do whatever you want because yeah. Konami were apparently really constricting. It's like, yeah. no, this is our game now, and you'll make it to our specifications. Whereas Sony could be like, Death Stranding's out. Do you want Metal Gear back? And if you do, you've got free creative license. Yeah. Like, just do whatever. Yeah. And, and for that reason, like with Konami, they've just stopped caring about games. Like there, there are things that are lost. Mm. Like Castlevania, you'll never see again. Silent Hill, you'll never see again. And I want more Silent Hill, goddammit. They just need to put Symphony of the Night just emulate it on the PlayStation. Yeah. And I'd buy it that quick because I've never played it. Mm. And it's such a revered game that I want to, but I'm not going to... It's hard to access. You know, it, yeah, like. you have to bring out your PS3. It's not readily available. Is it PS3? It's a PS1 classic. I think PS1 on PS3. classic, PS3. Play on PS3 play but still, you have to wheel out a console. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
But yeah, it's, I, I, rather than a developer, like bring the guys that they have, have them come do some cool stuff. Works for me. Um, I'm thinking one more IP I'd like them to have. Oh yeah. Keep talking. About um, it. So <laughs> you you mentioned you mentioned indie indie studios or smaller mm. studios, and I had one on my list, and we spoke about one of their games before, um, Drinkbox. So yeah, Guacamelee. why? Guacamelee. Yeah. Gu- the original Guacamelee. I mean, they had Super Mutants, and that was a PlayStation exclusive back when in its day. Guacamelee was a temporary exclusive, I think, until they put the Super Turbo Championship yeah. Edition out, um, and that was on Vita and PS3, and then yeah, eventually the rest. Um, and Seven then Seven was, was exclusive PS, yeah. until it went like mobile. I don't think it made it to anything. Oh, did it go? No, it's maybe came to the Wii U now, or something. Yeah, it's on Switch now. Is Seven on the Switch. Yeah. Oh, right. Is it? Um, but certainly it was exclusive when it first launched. Anyway, and so they've clearly got a bit of love for PlayStation. Come on over. And, the, and again, it's it's a nice contrast to this high end, big budget AAA stuff that we see. And like it is tonally about. different in terms of like of, it, of its of its gameplay. Like it's, it's a piss take. not that it's not that third person action adventure. It's lighthearted. It's fun. It's it's colourful. It's baffling that it isn't already there. It's a good pick. Yeah. Good, real good pick. That's all I got. I have one more. Go on. Blue point. Which who, 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 what are they? Shadow of the Colossus remake. Shadow of the Colossus remake. Uh, you know, and other ports. And other ports. Like they've Remasters. done, they they've done a lot of the ports of. But why would they buy a studio just to do ports when their studio does ports? Nostalgia for them? makes dollars. Yeah, but they're already doing it for. But them. these so guys clear. The but these guys have a have a clear skill. Yeah. And for that reason, they I think are apparently starting to develop an idea for their own IP. That that could be the thing as well. Like these guys and it have could suck dick. It could it could, it could very <laughs> well. Yeah, they could very only good at picking be up good other at people's ideas game. and yeah. But like having them come in and you know work like right now they have worked relatively exclusively. You know, like Shadow of Class is a big P- big PS2 exclusive. Apparently, what they're working on now is another big PlayStation product. Whether that be uh, I think the rumor mill is either Demon Souls or Metal Gear. I think it's very likely to be Demon Souls. Just more so than Metal Gear. More yeah. than Metal Gear. Although ideally, I'd like Metal Gear. Um, I think having them come in, even if they just happen to be a nostalgia train, because nostalgia train makes money, and they come in and they bring back old PlayStation games that people love. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's an interesting move to have a studio that just works on remasters as part of your portfolio, but they remasters make money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why. Awesome. Any more? Any more on your little list? Oh, I had some little things, but... What else yeah. on your list? Just run through them. Without... I mean, I had one stupid one that you'd, Does... you'd love, but uh, it's definitely not going to happen because they've bloody published their own games. CD Projekt I had on there. That's just uh, a big... That's no. a big Hail CD Mary. Pro- never, CD never Projekt happen. as a company they are, are yeah. now worth more than Square Enix. Yeah. They, they refuse to believe Quite it. Well. A little bit. Oh, but, because but they're they're, thanks to GOG. GOG as well. Yeah, GOG, yeah. Yeah. GOG's GOG, the big yeah. thing there. Yeah, because CD Projekt Red is the game developer. CD Projekt is the company as a yeah. whole which of course yeah owns GOG which is doing great things apparently uh, but yeah CD Projekt as a company are worth more than Square Enix at the moment Fuck, For, like, and Square Enix shit. is worth a fair bit and that's so. fucking insane that is insane uh, um, yeah and so I had one more which was Avalanche so as in the guys who do Just Cause and, and currently Mad Max and Rage, Rage too because okay. they're, they're bouncing around between publishers there they're clearly not locked down to someone and they've got Avalanche they've demonstrated was last year oh did they actually get picked uh, up by Bethesda by, no 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 by uh, a TV studio. Oh, really? Uh, so and so. And, all right, that's that's a. I must have missed that one. By someone. Nordisk Films buys um, Avalanche Studios. Well, we can uh, scratch early, that one. earlier this year, actually, only a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, just the. the Look at you with that memory, Josh. I heard it on a pl- podcast. I was listening to it on the way here. <laughs> oh, nice. Because <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, they were discussing the same thing. Why haven't but there's a. Uh, but they're going to buy Avalanche mm. and then um, Colin obviously Sacred Symbols brought up that uh, they were bought by yeah Nordisk. Nordisk, Nordisk Nordisk Films you could have said nothing I would have given you all that credit I'm an honest man <laughs> but what do you think the PlayStation should pick up in terms of their studios or IP even drop your comments below let us know they'll, what they'll pick up Nintendo are. And, yeah. and so don't be dumb Mario. Like, they should buy Donkey Kong no <laughs> they should they should probably buy Donkey Kong I'd fucking love that shit take Smash Bros they'll they trade could go back they'll to, trade Playstation they All-Stars to, uh, for your Smash Bros PlayStation All-Stars oh, I would like to see them take another take because you got to think Playstation All-Stars was up against obviously Smash Brothers, but Smash Brothers at that point was like three games in yeah plenty of time to work and figure it out because you go back and play the original Smash Brothers 64 and it's pretty fucking shit yeah. it's poops PlayStation All-Stars was a good 
like starting point good entry point let's try to figure it out what works what doesn't I reckon if they went back to it now and we, if should, they, we should have some new IP since then we can milk from and yeah and if you keep that name Battle Bloodborne Royale in there the Bloodborne guy oh yeah and Aloy yeah. and yeah if you, put, if you, if you sneakily Aloy. put the Battle you keep, Royale you keep Battle there. Royale on the end there yeah. Battle Royale 2 get, uh, people get really confused but they'll, <laughs> uh, it'll sell well get uh, get new Kratos back in there yeah get Atreus Atreus yeah. that's a character there are plenty of new stuff to bring in we'll just bring Geralt in yeah, why not? No, why he's not? in Soul Calibur. Yeah. Speaking of new stuff, Speaking though, of Soul Calibur, actually. Ooh. Oh, okay. Damn. God. Double segues. One of the original characters from like the second game onwards isn't available in the new one. It's... DLC? Uh, DLC. God damn it. God damn it, dude. Fuck, it's stupid. Anyway. But, but speaking of new games, though, in a section we call For the... For, what is it called? Coming, coming, to, the the coming to the Players. Thanks, Paul. We pretty much straight up just read you the drop. Get out of here. I got this. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Pretty big list this week. Tactical squad-based shooter Firewall Zero Hour deploys on the PSVR. It's basically Rainbow Six Siege in VR. I have reached out. Hopefully, yeah. Coach will come in the next couple of days. In Firewall Zero Hour, play as one of 12 contractors and work with teammates to either protect or obtain valuable data housed on a laptop located in various dangerous locations around the globe. So let me get my, get my thing... Uh, developed by First Contact Entertainment Fireball Zero Hours, a 4v4 based tactical shooter developed exclusively PSVR and compatible with PSVR aim controller and DualShock. I'm pretty keen to, to get the VR out of the sounds box Sounds like again. a cool idea. Yeah, it sounds awesome. Especially with the, the, the aim controller. Yeah, I think I'm totally in. Cool. It's, like, it's like a big old match of laser tag. Yeah. It's with actual death. Yeah. Uh, now I'm just going to skip through. You, you, and die, you die in your head. And side. hopefully yeah. me not hitting my wife with the aim controller again. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Favourite story. <laughs> <laughs> Better your wife than your kid, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, you're still small enough that you just swing straight. Yeah, over I just top straight over his head. All right, there's a lot, so I'm just gonna power through it. Bad North PS4 Digital. Stop me when you want to talk. If you want to talk about something, Blade Strangers PS4 Digital. Bow to Blood PSVR Digital. Catch and Release PSVR Fishing Digital. Games. Claybook PS4 Digital. Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition <laughs> PS4 Digital and Retail. Uh, Donut County. Oh yeah, PS4 read that Digital. one. I remember that was. Donut County is a story one. based. Uh, physics puzzle game where you play as an ever growing hole in the ground, meet new characters, steal their trash, and throw them in a hole. I did actually, I'm watching the video. <laughs> the PSX, physics, yeah. yeah. The PSX yeah, yeah. thing, yeah. It looks dope. Like you start off as a little hole and you got to find something small to fall in there so it grows bigger, then you kind of, yeah, that's it. That sounds cool, actually. It's a weird sort of concept, but. I mean. Downward Spiral, Horus Station, PSVR Digital. Could have picked a better name for that. Fern's Gate, <laughs> PS4, PSV to digital cross by Fire Pro Wrestling World. Buddy PS4, Watson pissing his pants on that one. Really? Yeah. The greatest grappling game returns to take on the world on the PS4. In Fire Pro Wrestling World, customize every aspect of the match from your wrestler to the ring itself. Fight your way through to the championship belt. Now, what you can and actually do is, yeah, you, we could create us, and then we can make the, we could, we can import the Popsy logo and stuff through the website, mm. make it all decked out in Popsy branding, and literally have a Popsy belt. And this is where the real concern comes in. Just like a particular game that you and I were both keen on last week. The drop there, it's not coming to Australia for about another month. That is also true. Yeah. So last Dragons week, yeah, Cafe. Fire yep. Dragons Cafe still hasn't dropped in you in Australia. And same with our Fire Pro Wrestling. Yeah. It looks as if Dragons. Sorry, Cafe buddy. Is probably keep September. waiting, man. I think uh, Buddy's aware because I did see him have the yeah. cry on, tw- on Twitter. Firewall Zero Hour PS VR Digital Retail Gate of Doom PS4 Digital. <laughs> That's a shocking like uh, like concept art or whatever. Yeah. The Golf Club 2019 featuring PGA Tour, Ooh, <laughs> PS4 that's nice. Digital, Haunted Dungeons, Hiaki Castle, PS4 Digital. My laptop is not cooperating. There we go. Naruto to Baruto, Shinobi Striker. <laughs> this is like a fake. <laughs> PS4 Digital and Retail, NBA 2K19, The Prelude, PS4 Digital. What's the prelude? Like, like go back up. NBA 2K. No, no, no don't read it. Just go scroll up, scroll up again. Keep going. Oh, sorry. I thought it was VR because I know that there was a Prelude VR last year. Oh, really? Yeah. Pato Box, PS4 Digital. Pet your box. Chic Hondo Soul Eater, PS4 Digital. Splash Blast Panic, PS4 Digital. Strange Brigade, PS4 Digital and Retail. Sunless Sea, Submariner Edition, PS4 Digital. Switchblade, PS4 Digital. Fuck me dead. <gasps> think of the children. Fuck Will somebody yes. please we think of the children. At we, RTX? we played at RTX and it's awesome fun. Oh, really? This, is, this would be a Lit- good stream. Little Bobby's dead. The barbecue is on fire. Jen's eating poisonous berries and the birthday cake still needs icing. It's just another wonderful day out with the kids. Think of the children as a frantic parenting simulator for up to four players. So basically, all these little kids are trying to find different ways to fucking kill themselves and you have to stop them. And it's very fast paced. Very, that's that's a good, concept. Like, like, like you run, you get grandpa out of the sun, and then you run and you get the kid out of the ocean. And one kid's like in the barbecue burning. Yeah. <laughs> as a soon to be father, this has me traumatized a little bit. I forgot, I forgot about this game, actually. The game was fantastic. Uh, that, yeah, that, that's cool. I like that. Uh, Torn PSVR Digital. 
Viking Days, PSVR, Digital, Yakuza, Kiwami 2, PS4, Digital and Retail. We've got a review for that on the site. Go check it out. Ooh, Sorry, play two. Plug, 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 plug. Outside, play two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Think of the Children It's probably Yeah, and Firewall Probably the ones yeah, Think of the Children And Firewall I think yeah. That's it That's it Anything to add Before I close this bad boy off Yeah, let Paul pimp his wares Go oh, Player2.net.au Reviews, previews There's a review for y- Yakuza Kiwami There is one going up For Divinity soon Ish I don't know if I can say that That's sometime in the future Someone will be doing it um, I have a whole bunch of shows On the YouTubes The Insider Patched uh, and you're newly yeah, created game of, game of school that is my new baby where I've gone through the entire Secret of Mana franchise and basically given you a I don't know a uh, we'll call it ed- edutainment I don't know is yeah. that is that I guess technically what that sort of yeah, thing gets done and, and, and um, soon to be the new PlayStation podcast Operation yeah Operation <laughs> PlayStation <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you Jesse um so yeah, there's some good stuff there, and we've also got the Player Two Charity Marathon coming up in the middle of September, the 15th to the 16th. It's in Canberra. We're raising, I think, close to three and a half thousand dollars. So yep. I think we we reached that. Well, that was well beyond what we expected last year. So we figure let's try and match it. Very nice. I'm not travelling up there this year because it's far yep. too close to baby time uh, for Fair. comfort. But uh, we will be hosting that on the on the Twitches as well. So you'll be you. able to see that there. Um, but that's that's about it, really. Excellent. Well, now Jesse has to be a part of PlayStation, Operation PlayStation. Should, should have copyrighted sure. it. <laughs> well, I did say copyright Jess Stevenson earlier, so I think that that's ver- verbal copyright. And it is documented, yeah. yeah. That PlayStation there. conversation happened on a Monday morning at 9am with Johnny Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and 8am on iTunes and the other podcast services. If you want to be a part of future conversations, please join us on Facebook. Join us on Discord. Comment below. If you're feeling generous, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash popculturists. Head over there, check out the tiers. There might be something there that interests you. I also apologise because if you haven't noticed, I'm quite unwell today again and if you were a patreon supporter you could have watched us record this live on a saturday morning and of course some other goodies there as well if you want to show the love of the pop cultures on your body <laughs> head to the pop culturescom slash shop where you can buy shirts like this and bust those titties out oh shit <sighs> yeah. but i'm unwell bust them yeah <laughs> we buy shirts and phone cases and bags and books and a bunch of cool things with our logos smacked on them and of course we're also on twitch at twitch.tv slash the pop culture it's like any fucking content creator is everyone is either on youtube and or twitch mostly end but until then until next week i'm ryan betson i'm paul james i'm josh saunders and that was for the players Woo! <laughs>